Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. In this episode today, we've got a fun one. We're going to talk about everything that went down in the major, including some out-of-game drama, the crazy matches, um, maybe the least sweeps we've ever seen in a weekend. Super fun to talk about there. We're going to talk about some early potential roster drama and what each team may need to do uh, to reach the top, as well as do a little tier list at the end of the video. You'll see a uh, tier list pop up on the screen there, and we're just going to tier rank uh, the teams where they are right now as it stands. Uh, probably going to wait to do players because doing the player tier list is always funky in the middle of roster change time because you might end up ranking eight players that are getting dropped. So it's just a weird time. going to maybe wait for that to solidify uh, a little bit more. So if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on the audio platforms, drop a follow, drop a five-star review. We appreciate all the support. As always, you guys crushed it on the last one, as you always do uh, for the major prediction. So we really, really appreciate you guys. Let's just jump into this one. Brock, how are you doing today? Oh, you know, doing pretty good. Good final Monday. Some great Call of Duty being played yesterday and throughout the weekend. And, you know, very excited for, you know, not major four since there's no fans, but champs. Yeah. <laughs> it feels criminal that we have to jump back into no fan online COD after what was, to be honest, like one of the best tournaments i can remember like non i don't count champs because to me champs is just always awesome just like yep. with the ring on the line like one of the best majors i can remember watching in quite some time i mean the sunday was absolutely incredible mm -hmm. only thing that could have possibly made sunday better is if the grand finals would have went seven yep that's like the only thing but even it was an entertaining sweep because like some of the maps were close. They still had like big time clutch moments and like the listening on the final map, uh, the Rio was awesome. Like listening to them get so hyped. Uh, but the shocking thing, Brock, from the weekend, I'm just, you know, looking at the bracket. There was only two sweeps in the weekend and one of them, I can't even say three O's because it was a four O in the grand finals. There was only one three O in bracket play leading up to the grand finals. And that was phase over subliners. Yeah. I mean, you definitely wouldn't have thought that would be a three O. Yeah, like if you would have told me there's going to be 1-3-0 on the entire weekend, I would have been like, okay, face Heretics. Mm -hmm. That probably would have been the one I would have said going into the weekend. Obviously, Heretics come out, and they actually have a pretty good showing on the weekend, but they didn't get 3 0 None of the bottom uh, teams got 3 0 by the top four over in the top part of the bracket. It was just Subliners getting 3 0 by FaZe, and then Ultra getting 4 0 in the finals. So, like, oddly enough, yeah, the only teams to get swept were Ultra and New York, which... I don't think anybody would have predicted going into the weekend. Yep, agreed there. <laughs> but we're going to just, I mean, let's jump into just talking about each team. Kind of like we'll start like we always do. We'll, we'll talk about like matches for the bottom team. So we'll go with like the teams that were eliminated first. Kind of talk about outlook, potential roster changes for them. And then we'll work our way up to the top team. So um, obviously, Las Vegas Legion, one of our first teams eliminated here, get taken out 3-2 by the Miami Heretics. They only get to play the one match on LAN. Um, for the Miami Heretics, uh, or not the Miami, Miami Heretics, sorry, the Las Vegas Legion, um, just another extremely disappointing performance. After they take the first two respawns to go up 2-1 in the series, uh, they lose a close six-star and then kind of get blown out on the Invasion Surge. Another tournament ends for them on Invasion Surge. Mm -hmm. Um just to, I mean, they had two players drop 100 kills, kind of criminal to lose. Like, nobody on their team really had a terrible series. They were all putting in pretty even damage. Uh, Geo was a little bit superhuman. What uh, on the, um, uh, what was it? The, the high rise. Yeah, 35 and 28, Nero 40 and 27. I mean, those two were just going crazy um, mm -hmm. on that high rise to clutch up and get them a 2 1 lead. And after seeing that map, I'm not going to lie, I thought it was time for Vegas to make a little run, maybe get top six or something. I thought Miami was bowing out again. Yep. But they battled back, and obviously we know they battled back quite nicely because they had a lot longer run. But we're focusing on Vegas here, Brock. It's getting scary. I mean, I know this is early, early, early iterations of this team, uh, considering, you know, Johnny's only played a couple matches with them now. But it, it is very concerning because they've got to start getting some wins on the board and, and wins on the board quick, or Champs is going to slip out of their reach. Yeah, well, they've gotten, like, what, one or two wins since they dropped Purge? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they got, what, did they, yeah, like, one win? Uh, online. Online, and then obviously none at the major. Mm -hmm. Two wins, sorry. They, they won two matches online. Yep. And this split, and got the nine seed, so then, yeah. 
then obviously not on land. So two and six in this split if you include both online and land. Yeah, not looking good. Like they, like you said, if uh, Johnny had more time, as they should have done, like a week prior to you know, drop and purge, and pick up Johnny or whoever it would be, and you know, maybe it'd be a different story at this point. They more chemistry together and potentially even beat Miami Heretics. Yeah, they also might just potentially need like. I mean, maybe Purge was a glue. Maybe it, it messed with their chemistry that much. I still think if they had a different player from the beginning of the year, they would be a lot better. But maybe they were just so used to Purge um, in his play style that things have just been that thrown off. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's what it looks like. You know, see, Purge was the glue and, you know, dirty work player, hill player. And now you don't have that and you scramble and try to have someone else do it to the best of their abilities. It's also tough because at this point, if you're not getting purge back, I mean, we could talk about like roster outlooks and roster changes, but at some point you've got to just pick a roster and try to develop some chemistry and stick. Mm -hmm. Like you've only got one online split and major left. And like there are by no means out of it. I mean, they're, they have 110 CDL points and seventh place is 125. Eighth place is 120. Even all the way up to fifth place is only 20 points. It's two matches ahead of them. Like, they can't obviously get any higher than five, but like the literally the five seed is within reason for Vegas. Like, mm -hmm. so it's not like you can just chalk it up, pick up new players, say whatever, whatever happens, happens because you have legitimate, uh, I mean, you have a legitimate chance to, to make champs. Like it's not out of the question at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. They just need to go back, you know, practice with the team more, get more commission to the belt and, you know, have a better major. And if, if not, then it looks like they're not going to make champs. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie, though, with the way that the teams look right now, our current top eight, I would not be upset by that being the eight teams at champs. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Miami is fun and, like, brings a lot of energy and talent and excitement. So, like, I don't hate them being in there. Seattle, I mean, current form-wise, is potentially the best of the non-top four teams. They're right up there, like the 5-6 right now. Yep. Um, LAT obviously has, has had some disappointing showings on land and potentially making a roster change. We'll talk about that, but they definitely are a team that I want to see at champs because LAT can certainly put up a fight against the top teams. Uh, and then Carolina as well, I would say over the rest of the, the other ones with the way Vegas looks, obviously LAG and Boston are our bottom two and then Minnesota doesn't look great. Like Carolina is a fun team. They will make series competitive at champs as well. So like our yep. current top eight, I would be, I would definitely be okay with that being the teams that show up at champs. Yeah, I'd have to maybe agree with that. Besides, maybe LG sneaking there. <laughs> Stop it! They they let you down. We'll talk about them in a minute. They let you down. They did. Um, they sure did. <laughs> but overall, I don't need, like it's it's hard to even like say with this Vegas Legion team like make a roster change or anything because like we're saying like they you just are running out of time and if it were like you know we may say we want to see other teams make a roster change but they may be teams that haven't really made a change this year or made very minimal changes or have had the same roster for a while. But the reason it's tougher to say for Vegas is because Johnny's played two matches and you just mm -hmm. subbed out Purge for Asim and then you didn't even let Asim play a single land match and then you subbed in Johnny. Uh, like they had three different players fill in that spot in just the online qualifiers this stage in the seven matches. So like it's hard to say they should switch again unless there's like a clear and obvious upgrade. But like I don't even think Johnny is bad. Yeah, I think he held he held his own for what he was put into. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think his team has potential. I mean, they they went two map fives and lost them both with Johnny, but uh, I don't know. Just kind of a mess of a team. It's so disappointing from where they were. Yeah, like legitimate top six team to this is very disappointing. Yeah, like top five last major and now tenth in the standings, eleventh. Yeah, it's rough. Um. <laughs> Let's go to our next team that was eliminated top 12, though, Brock. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with the Boston Breach. Shocker, Brock. Boston lost another game five. Ooh. Um, not shocking to anybody, but they did lose another game five. Um, and it's just, I mean, they lost two search and destroys. This team is incapable of winning search, and they weren't even very close. It was a 6-2 and a 6-3. Like, this team did exactly what we expected them to do you know they were competitive in the respawns they even took two respawns but um if they don't take that game four hard point you know the series is pretty much over when a map five gets forced um mm -hmm. that's like going down two one against this team isn't even that threatening especially like if you're able to like win that map four you're like well you know we're gonna get this map five because this team has no ice 
Yeah, it's obviously in the back of their minds that they lost so many game fives and searches just in a row and in, in, in general. <laughs> yeah, at some point, it probably has to mess with your psyche a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But on the side of Boston, I mean, like, I don't know that Pentagram is the answer for me. He struggled a lot online. He didn't look amazing in the series either. Like, I don't think he's like a long term answer. But at this point for them, I don't even know if they're going to make roster changes because they are they are the team that is like so far out of it. I mean, they're at 50 points. Carolina is at 120. So obviously, like, they're 70 points behind the last spot for champs, which obviously we know if they would go 7-0 and in the qualifiers, uh, they would only tie Carolina, and that's assuming that Carolina would go 0-7, which I'm probably not going to happen. Um, so pretty, pretty impossible for them to, you know, get in just off online matches unless some crazy stuff happens, but then they're also going to have to win some matches on land. So, I mean, I would say for Boston to make champs, it's probably going to require them to win at least five matches uh, in the the regular split and then have like a good run at the tournament to probably like top four, top three, maybe even finals. So, I mean, we could pretty much write off Boston for champs at this point, Brock. Yeah, it's it's definitely looking rough. <laughs> Yeah, like you said, top three and five online matches wins with this Man, current might even team. Be more than that, depending on all the other teams ahead of them do. Yeah, with this current form team, just it ain't gonna work, and I don't think they're gonna make a change at this point since they're, like you said, they're so far behind. Although I will, I will say as we watch him, like Beans is a shooter. He's got a lot of talent. Yep, we're seeing the mechanical skill of Snoopy too that nobody's denied. Like, there's a lot of mechanical skill there. There's a lot to work with. I really do think. That the Bean Snoopy duo, like, now you gotta remember, like, is it the best duo ever? No, but like, the talent is so loaded on the top teams right now that you've got to kind of figure it out outside of that. And to me, I think just with like the talent and ability of like Beans is a shooter, and like at some point, like you, yes, you do need to get a team that is gonna be able to play together, play smart, and everything outside the top four. But also at some point, like you just have to be able to talent stack a little bit to be able to shoot with those top teams. And, and Beans and Snoopy are shooters. Like if you can continue to work on, you know, the fundies with them, the fundamentals, and like get everything all set, like I, I think that they could be a pretty good duo. I just don't think uh, Pentagram and Priest are maybe exactly what they need. Although I don't know, I feel like Priest could fit with these two as maybe a little bit more fundamentals, but I don't know. Pentagram just to me doesn't, doesn't have the skill to go along with these two. Yeah. Is it looking like uh put Doug in for the last major and see how they do have some fun out there? I mean, shoot. Yeah. You're not going to win. Put them in. Let us, let us at least meme and have some fun. Yeah. They get some, they get the views. That's for sure. Yeah. But that team is pretty much chalked. Uh, there isn't going to be much to talk about with them for the rest of the year. I don't think unless they just wow us somehow and make some insane run. Yeah. Um, but Brock, sad, Doug, sad, sad, kind of, I was going to say, it's kind of sad for Priest uh, going from a championship team to a bottom team. That does really suck. That has to be tough on the mental, too. Like, you won a world championship. Like, you're thinking, I'm going next year. We're going to go try to defend our title. Like, we're going to be a top four team again. And then, honestly, not even like you get thrown to a new team, but you get thrown to a new team that everybody is saying is going to be like top five, like a, a, a team that can compete. And you're just actually dead last. Yeah, it just, it's got to be tough. And, I mean, for the side of Boston, like, roster changes are going to be pretty much impossible because unless it's a player's last resort and they really just want to get the guaranteed salary or want their first chance to show what they can do in the league, like, if it's a player coming up for the first time, like, nobody's going to want to join this roster because why would you? Your chance, like, if you have an offer from any other team, you're taking that offer first because every other team legitimately every other team has a chance to make it to champs because the difference between eight and 11 is 10 points. Mm, yeah. And then Boston is 70 points behind eight. So literally all 11 teams, I mean, obviously the top four aren't making a change, but all teams five through 11 have a real chance to either make or miss champs. Cause the difference between fifth and 11th is 20 points. Which yeah. I'm very excited for going into major four. It'll make those bottom, like the bottom team matches aren't the most fun to watch, but it, it at least makes them more fun because every match for those bottom teams is absolutely crucial for points. Yep, it'd be the good crucial for points, and the major will be the, the decider, which you know more stakes on the line, which you love to see. I mean, yeah, there's a legitimate likelihood that like at least nine, ten, most likely like eleven teams are very much in the mix, like realistically with like a top six placing uh, to make it to champs. So that's gonna make major four like really exciting in that aspect. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But like we're saying, nobody's going to go to Boston unless it's their absolute last resort because they're going to take an offer from any other team ahead of them because all the other teams have a real chance. Yeah. Um, then Minnesota Rocker Brock. This one is really disappointing, obviously sad. You know, everybody knows that we kind of root for them a little bit. Um, they do fall to Seattle Surge, which Surge ended up looking pretty good in the weekend. But uh, Minnesota only able to take a round 11 on high rise uh, and win the map too. I don't know. It was a rough series for Linz. He seems to have slowed down a little bit from like he was our clear cut rookie of the year for a little bit there. And now uh, it's probably Gwyn for sure. But like Linz looked so good early in the year. He had a really bad map one, 17 and 29. And overall in the series just didn't have the same impact. Um, I don't know, Brock. Thoughts on Minnesota? I have a thought that's like going to break. Everybody knows it's going to break both of our hearts for me to say it. But uh, I'll let you go first. Thoughts on Minnesota? Oh, man. It just seems like ever since they did uh, sub out Vivid for Standy and such, it just seems like Lynn is just does not feel comfortable, and he's, that's just he's had fine series, but like yeah, he, he hasn't been like the takeover like we saw for a while. Yeah, he, he just feels more not comfortable, and you know, it just it's just kind of tough to see. But you know, that's what happens when you, you try these interchangeable with teams. Yeah. It was like what we said, and it could be, you know, we've mentioned it. It could be the whole situation where maybe like Vivid asked to be benched or something because of whatever was going on in his personal life. Like we, we didn't mention that, but um, man, I don't know. Like it's just so tough because like he seemed like such a superstar and like it could not even be him. It could just be like, yeah, like you said, with Vivid getting dropped and like the team around him changing, like maybe it's not setting him up for success as much. Like, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This seems tough, but Brock, do I have to say it? Does Lamar need to be dropped now at this point? Lamar. <laughs> it's been rough for him since stage one. Stage one, he was actually a pretty good player. Mm-hmm. Um, But it's uh, it's been rough out here, Brock. Yeah, I, I, I just don't see them dropping them, but I don't know who it'd be for at this point. Because well, I'm pretty sure they got rid of Awakening from their sub spot. Yeah, but Brock, there's a very obvious main AR upgrade that is not currently playing. Oh, yeah. Mr. Slasher. Yeah. Slasher Gunless? The Slasher Gunless duo has worked in the past. I mean, you know, obviously didn't work as well on LAG recently, but like, if you're Minnesota right now and you're looking at the bottom uh the bottom eight teams you're tied technically i mean they don't have the tiebreaker right now but they are tied for eighth place in points you have a legit you're 10 points behind fifth like if you're the rocker and do you think that your talent level of the players in your team is that much below any of the other bottom eight teams i don't think so mm-hmm. i think like Linz hasn't been playing as well but i think Linz is still very good i think standy is still very good um i think gunless is still really good Accuracy just has not been good enough. He's just been really poor, which, you know, if we're saying that, like, it's legitimate. Like, it hasn't been good for him at all because we are massive accuracy fans. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's just been, I mean, it's been rough for accuracy. Where, I mean, where is he on the the KD for Major 3? Even just, like, in Hardpoint, I think he's probably, can't even find him on this list. Am I blind? He's so far down there, he can't find Yeah, him. he's in 54th. Uh, there's 48 <laughs> active players. Um, yeah, just, I, I don't know. It's rough for accuracy. It pains me to say it, but, like, there's such an obvious upgrade out there, and that's Slasher. And to be honest with you, like, of the other teams, obviously, like, let's just look at the bottom eight teams for Slasher because I got to believe he's, like, the top candidate for a main AR, most likely. Because, like, it's harder to pick up, like, a rookie at this time because with so little time to get them integrated, it's harder maybe to learn their style of play and get them up to speed, whereas Slasher's an easier player to get up to speed, you know? Just Mm -hmm. being a veteran and having a ring, having won so many tournaments and all that. But, like, let's look at the options, Brock. So Miami, obviously not getting picked up by them. Seattle, not making a roster change, I would assume. LAT, apparently talked about making a roster change, but it sounds like it could be for Kremp. Uh, So probably not going there. Carolina, I doubt they're dropping Clay. And the clay, like if they were dropping someone, it's probably fellow, even though he played very well this weekend. 
but yeah. like I don't think the clay slasher duo makes a whole lot of sense to me. I think they would clash. Um, mm-hmm. Vegas are not dropping Geo or Attach, and LAG would be a good spot for him, but they're not making a roster change because you know we know they're not picking up anybody outside. So like, yeah. really, probably the most realistic and maybe only realistic option is Rocker, and like I gotta believe if you're slasher, they're they're sitting tied for eighth place. Like you have a real chance to make champs. And you get to go into a roster with a pretty talented sub duo in Standy and Linz and a guy that you've played with before and is really talented and gunless. Like that's a if I'm slasher, I'm taking an offer all day. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't to me, Minnesota, the upgrade's obvious. You pick up slasher and you drop accuracy. As much as it pains me, I love accuracy. Everybody knows that both of us love accuracy, so we gotta take the bias out. Um I love Lamar. If they don't drop him, I'm not going to say anything and be upset about it just because my bias for Lamar is going to kick in. Mm. But I think they got to pick up Slasher for him. Uh, it's too obvious to me. And Minnesota yeah. is already shown in the past that like they will go after it, you know? Yeah. So I I wouldn't be surprised to see him do it. Yeah, I mean, that would know, be a good, good pickup since you know, Lamar has been... Yeah, very good, and you know, team's not bad r- around them. Yeah, I still don't know about the sub duo, but it would be an improvement at least. Slasher would be an individual improvement. Uh, yeah, I still think would bring some good in-game leadership, just a little bit more high skill ceiling than Lamar. Mm-hmm. Um, our next team, Brock, your boys that you picked to go to top four, LAG were eliminated by Carolina. Uh, they looked rough, uh, to say the least, in their series. Um. Not a not a great performance. We were hoping it could be different with Flames, um, but it, it was not different. Flames had a point eight five. Fame, uh, on the other hand, did a really rough series, forty five and seventy two overall. They pretty much just got slammed. Like, yeah, this series wasn't that close. They got three out on the control and got kind of blown out on that map. But other than the control, I mean, they handled them pretty easily on the Karachi hardpoint map one. It was a Clayster masterclass. Uh, Fellow played very well as well. Uh, then the map two was a six zero. And then a 250 to 136 in the Vista hardpoint. Uh, another fellow masterclass, 31 and 13. Fellow had, this was probably the best series of the year for fellow. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Probably the best series we've seen all year from him. Yep. I mean, overall, to be honest, we'll talk, let's talk Carolina a little bit, but it was a pretty good weekend for fellow. Yeah, for fe- fellows, he, he's shooting. Yeah, which, I mean, we're not shocked to see fellow shoot on land, but let, let's focus on LAG, Brock. I don't even really want to spend too much time on him. I'd rather save time for other stuff on the pod. Uh, I mean, this LA down team, again. <laughs> like, I still think that they're more exciting without assaults. Like, I still think they do have a, a higher ceiling. I mean, I, you definitely could argue against me on that point because they got two top sixes with assault and now got a top twelve without him. So you could definitely argue against me, and I wouldn't really have much to say back. But in my opinion, I just feel more optimistic about the team with Flames because he at least has uh, a higher ceiling, but. There's not much to say about this LAG team. I'm kind of hoping they don't make champs because to me, they're not going to make nearly as fun of a match um, as like literally anybody. I think they might actually make the most boring match. At least Boston shoots and respawns. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> I think LAG might make one of the most boring matches. So I'm kind of hoping they don't make champs. And there's not much to talk about because we know they're not making a roster change. The only roster change they would make would be to insert Assault back in. Yeah, they're kind of stuck at this point. Yeah. Which is unfortunate to have a team in the league like that that you know like literally won't even make a roster change because they just refuse to spend any money or even have the employees to do so. It's just annoying. Yeah, it really is. But you know, what what, what can they do? They got to ride it, ride it out together, and hopefully they can make can make, make a run. Yeah. Um. All right, Brock. Lat. I guess this was one of the more shocking results. I mean, of our teams to bow out top twelve, like. We're not shocked by Legion because of how bad they look. We're not shocked by Breach. Uh, we're not even really shocked by Minnesota or LAG. Um, all the teams that came from or that started in losers lost first round. Like they were all struggling. I don't think we're really shocked by any of those. Um, but I would say LAT bowing out top eight is a little bit surprising. I figured most people would think they'd get one round further to top six. Mm-hmm. Uh, and LAT overall just like continues. Uh, they just continue the like constant disappointment on land like it's back-to-back stages now where lat they look really good overall like i don't know i'm really thinking like okay lat we're seeing something out of them like they're looking good let's see what they can do on land and i mean last event they get top 12 i guess this event they do technically improve to get a top eight but still it's just not it's not great 
yeah. We're, we're thinking more since top six, top four, since how you know how good they've been playing online. It just hasn't translated to that land. Which is, I mean, it sucks because, I mean, that boy Dan Ghosty, he has been shooting. Mm-hmm. He's been good all year. <laughs> yeah, he's been very good all year. I mean, just in this series against New York, um, where I was thinking for a second LAT was about to come out and win this series, and I was thinking your prediction was about to be right. They came out, Dan Ghosty went 38-22 and 22 on a Rio, uh, and they just took it to New York. They beat him, uh, and then they lose three straight maps. Uh, and they handle them in pretty decent fashion. Uh, overall, it was kind of a stinker from Kremp and Joe to C's both point sevens, nasty at a point eight, but Ghosty had a good one in that series. Um, and he continued with the good matches. Uh, he was able, where's this other match here? I want to get the exact stats here. The, in the Boston match, um, Mr. Ghosty put up a 1.28 again, 95 and 74. Uh, and even in the elimination match uh, against the Heretics, uh, Dan Ghosty still in his worst match with a 0.96. Uh, Joe DeCees with a 1.14. Nasty with a 1.08. They just kind of bought him out here, and it was a rough one for Kremp in the elimination match going 5-19. and 19. Apparently, he was having some controller issues and had a broken controller, which still begs the question to me, how do players not come to the event with two controllers? I just, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> the amount yeah. of stories we hear about broken controller, and I understand, like, yeah, you have to break in a new controller, like, it could feel a little different, but at least it's not broken. Like, the amount of stories we hear every year of COD of players just having a broken controller, just, it makes no sense to me how you don't have a second controller on deck ready in case that situation happens with how many players we hear end up getting broken controllers. Unless, I mean, maybe there's something, in, there can't be something in the rules that say it's not allowed, because, like, if your controller fully breaks, you're just not allowed to play. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't bring it back up, just, you know on the off chance that it could possibly break. Yeah, it just makes no sense to me. And I don't know, Brock. Apparently the rumor on the street is potentially Kremp could be out for the side of LAT. I mean, he did have a very bad last map going 5-19, and 19, but I'm not so sure that I'm sold on LAT making a roster change. Like, I know they haven't been as good on land, but, like, they're definitely, like, seem to be our fifth best team overall. Like, if you include the whole body of work from the last like stage or two, they're probably our five team. I know they haven't had the success on land, but like no teams outside the top four have really had the top have like had better than top six on land. And LAT seems to be constantly improving. Like I feel like their team is good. I feel like they have good vibes in their team and good chemistry. I just don't know if I agree with a, a drop on this team this late into the season. I feel like at this point you have pretty good chemistry and you are placing like, I mean not placing the best, but like. You do look like a top six team. Like I feel like you should just ride it out. Yeah, I agree. Then you know, Crip did have a a stinker of the map four, but part of it could be, like I said, the controller breaking, and you know, just, it just kind of gets annoying. It'd be annoying, and it's in the back of his head knowing his controller is broken, if that is what it was. Yeah, it just I don't know. It's such a weird situation. I just don't know how to feel about it. Um, but yeah, apparently they could be dropping Crimp, and I guess you know we have to see how they play and like who they pick up, but. It's a little bit weird for me for a team that's having a decent amount of success and maybe just not translating it to a couple interesting match situations. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting for them to make a change so close to champs with only one split left. I mean, I guess you are going to make a change now. You pretty much have to do it now so you can get a little practice in with the week off and also so you can get a full set of online matches. But still very weird for that team to be making a roster change if that's the case. Yeah, and if they do, is you know, Hopefully they just don't turn into the Las Vegas Legion. <laughs> yeah, and they just completely bottom out from it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brock, then we had Carolina Royal Ravens, our other team, to finish with a top eight. Uh, they were handled <clears throat> decently easy in round one by Optic, uh, and then they go on to face your boys, LAG, and they kind of steamrolled LAG, uh, like we already talked about. Not much of a close series at all. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to steamroll, and then they fall to Seattle Surge. Um, in a weird-looking series, if you just look at the scoreboard, because everybody on Carolina was positive except Clay, who was 76 and 77. Um, but on the side of Seattle, uh, everybody negative except Abuza, who had a very nice series with a 1.17. Um, it just overall, Carolina, like, 
they're just not able to get it done on land again, even though they look like pretty good. Like once again, coming out of the weekend, I'm like, okay, Carolina looked pretty good, but they're left with another top eight. Um, mm-hmm. Just a weird situation here. I, it's tough to put your finger on it. Like Gwynn still continues to be a superstar. TJ is having the most consistent year we've seen out of TJ in quite some time. He had exactly uh, 1.0 on this series against Surge. But TJ, when you watch him, like he's still making the good fundamental play. And like overall, this is probably the best consistent year I've seen out of TJ. It, pr- damn near since BO4, probably. Yeah. I have to sit, say so too. <laughs> he's playing very well. Like the, and, and Fellow played overall pretty well on the weekend too. Mm hmm. I definitely I watched the first match six star and you know they were shooting fellow felony especially was shooting and Gwyn and I thought it'd definitely be a three zero for uh Royal Ravens okay. Carolina Ravens and you know it just didn't happen. <laughs> like even on that map, Brock, like the kills in the side of Carolina. I mean, we had a one point two, one point six, one point six, one point one. Like we had twenty six, thirty two, thirty one, twenty three kills on the side of Surge. Everybody's a point eight or worse. 16, 20, 24, 21. I mean, that's what? 40, 60, 81 kills to what's over here? 49, 80, 112? Like, mm-hmm. you're getting out slayed by like 30 plus kills, 20, 30 kills, and you're only winning the map 250 to 210? Yeah, yeah, it was 112 to 81 in the kills column. Jeez. But you're only winning by 40 like that was a theme with seattle this whole weekend is they they play so fast and play so together that even when they're getting out slay they're right in there and can beat you at maps Mm -hmm. the way they play hardpoint is so team oriented and like team push oriented i love it seattle's a fun team to watch but rock carolina i mean i kind of as weird as it sounds like we were calling for them to make a roster change maybe before last split so they would have had time but at this point, I'm kind of on the boat for Carolina as you look pretty good on land with the veteran presence and you like have come close to beating some teams like at this point to not screw with the chemistry with such little time left. Do you just keep the roster? Um, Yeah, I think they just keep the roster and try to make a make a run. Kind of what I'm thinking, but like, sure, you could try to upgrade somebody, but like, do you want to mess with the chemistry this close to champs? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I could get interchange one of these players and you know maybe Quinn will start now not be doing that that well and that's just what you're not gonna want yeah, kind of like we see with Linz, the the changes maybe have affected him a little bit more than you would expect yeah and you kind of need Gwyn to pop off of mostly every map against especially against the top against the top four teams i mean yeah because Gwyn is probably the most like consistent like star level player outside of the top four teams i mean he he pretty much is on almost every series yeah um, Brock, then we had Miami Heretics and Seattle Surge, who we just talked about bowing out uh, in the top six. Uh, not much else you can say about Heretics, but a very positive weekend from them. I mean, for Heretics to finish top six coming into the weekend, they didn't have a LAN uh, map win. That mm-hmm. series against FaZe, their first series was so odd because they didn't get 3 0'd, but they got absolutely stomped yeah. in the respawns. Like, that series was like. 3-1, you're like, okay, Heretics put up a fight, but, like, that map one was such a weird map because, like, let me look at the kills. Yeah, the kills department on this one was 121-90 to 90 in favor of FaZe. I mean, outslaying by 31 kills, but, like, when you watch that map, like, Heretics actually, at the end, if they would have had a good rotation, they had a chance to secure that game, getting outslayed by, like, 30 kills. Uh, I mean, Real at a point five on the map. Vic with a point eight. Lucky at a point six. Medals was the best KD on the team with a 1.0, 27 and 27. A BZ at 40 on the other side. Simp at 31. Like, FaZe was destroying them in the gunfights and only won 250 to 211. And, like, Miami had a legit chance to win that map. Yeah. Uh, and then they go on to, obviously, win the search and destroy, get kind of dominated on the control, and then get 100-point clubbed on Rio. So, 3-1 is probably closer than that series actually showed. But after that, uh, Miami is able to go on and beat uh, a Vegas Legion team who's struggling. But then they beat a pretty good LAT team, and they go on to lose to Optic. But that Optic series was actually like decently close. They lost the sub base by about 50. They kind of rolled them uh, in the search and destroy. They got rolled on control. Uh, but then that six-star hard point, Miami had a real chance to win that. I mean, Real was doing everything for them in that mm-hmm. map four. Damn you, Jack. He dropped 39. 
Yeah, and he was just making plays like two piece after two piece. So many impactful kills. Um, they do fall to Optic. I mean, they got blown up by FaZe, but overall, like they put up a legitimate fight against Optic in some of those maps, uh, including dominating them in search and destroy. Like, shout out to Miami because they played a lot better than I think any of us expected this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were probably going to get three would 3 would but turn around, win some maps online, and win some matches too. Yeah. Um, and that's good for the standings for them. They had a pretty good weekend overall. They did. Uh, and you know what, Brock? It it was a big weekend for them, too, because like with no land points, again, they could have fallen out of the champs race, but the fact that they're able to get top six, they secure um, their spot in the top eight for now, uh, and they actually do currently hold the fifth spot. So right now, Miami, most points of any CDL team are with tiebreakers uh, than anybody outside the top four, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to sort by just the major tournament here because I want to know what the top player on their team finished with, which is, I'm assuming is Real. I forget what he finished with on his KD. I think the phase series will really affect it. I mean, yeah, Real had a, a 0.96, but that phase series really kind of skews things because they got slammed so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, shout out to Heretics. It was a big weekend for them. They actually showed some life. They're a fun team when they get rolling. They get a lot of energy. Yeah, they play super fast. Yeah. Um, then Brock, Seattle Surge. A great showing from them. They're looking like one of the more promising teams outside the top four right now. Uh, they did kind of get rolled by Toronto relatively easily. Abuza had a, a good series. Everybody else kind of struggled. But, I mean, Abuza, the story for Seattle Surge this weekend was him. I mean, this was his, like, coming out party this event. He finished fifth overall in KD with a 1.15. And it seemed like every map, he was just doing it all for his team. Mm-hmm. Um, 04 overall, like 04 had a decent weekend. Um, he had a 0.92, but you could see in there were a lot of moments he was playing pretty well. Um, uh, on the tournament, Hook had a 0.84, but I felt like Hook was also making some pretty impactful plays. And then Brezzy had a 0.83. But like we said, this team, like they play at a pace and play with such a togetherness and hard point that like it seems like, I don't know, it seems like they're pretty good like together. So you don't want to mess with the chemistry, but Brock, I have an interesting proposal that like, I know he has crazy chemistry with the Booza, So maybe you don't do it, but like, I wouldn't be opposed to if there was a flex, they believed out there that could bring a little more to the team, maybe looking to move Brezzy. Cause like it could be the time for Seattle to get aggressive. Cause like, yes, they look great, but like, do you want to try to push it a little further and take a risk? Or do you just want to settle and probably finishing top six at best at champs? Hmm. Yeah, it's, who was the player you're thinking of? I honestly don't know. Like, I know Dylan Rex has been playing pretty well, and I think he can run an AR. I just, like, I mean, Brack is another AR, but I just don't think he would fit the team because Brack, to me, would be probably too slow to fit next to a Booza. He's been one of the other, like, you know, better main ARs. I just don't like the fit there. Um, yeah. Because we know Abuza, obviously, as we've seen now, Abuza getting on the main AR is what really, really helped him a lot. So, um don't like the fit there as much, but just want to give a shout out to Brad because he has been one of the better AR players winning like constant tournaments. Yep. So I think Dylan Rex can run more of a flex and people have been saying he's super good. So maybe him, but also like I know Brezzy and Abuza have a lot of chemistry. So if they don't want to mess with that, I completely understand. I just think like it could be time to potentially pack a punch because he hasn't been the best, but I also like Brezzy a lot as a player. So I can completely see the logic in keeping him. I mean, they just had their best placing. Uh, if they decide to keep the team, I'm, I'm not going to fault them for, for it but sometimes i do think when you get your uh better placing like this and you start to look like a promising team it might be time to even like go for it all and risk it um because i don't think this team can upset the top four teams as yeah, I, currently formed but you never know yeah and it's crazy to think that they had a booza on the sub at the start of the game <laughs> it, it's crazy to think about yeah like we were like oh he has a lot of talent so maybe he could do it like who knows but like yeah, now that we see him on the main AR, it is crazy. Man, what were they thinking? <laughs> this dude is gross. He's very, very, very good. I mean, this weekend was truly his coming out party. Like, this dude is a stud. Um, Seattle could have a potentially bright future because, like, we know, like, 04 has looked pretty good for how early it is in his tenure in the CDL. Abuz has looked pretty good. You know, if they keep a player like Hook, his ceiling is always pretty high, especially for being on one of the bottom eight teams. Like, Seattle has some decent building blocks here. Abuza is a stud, like, it, I expect to be a pretty darn good main AR for quite some time. Yeah, and who knows if he would have played main AR at the start of the year, 
probably in contention for this rookie of the year. Yeah, potentially. Um, especially with the way like Lynn's kind of bottomed out. Like no rookies are really winning a lot right now, although Gwyn has been popping off overall. So maybe hard to take him down. But yeah, Booza looks very good on the main. Yeah. Gwyneth has like the biggest sample size of literally being so good for like all stages. Yeah. Um Brock. Oh boy. New York subliners finish fourth. Um, once again, decent for them to make it to the top four, but they should have beat Optic in loser semis. Mm-hmm. They should have beat them and honestly probably should have beat them 3-0. They choked that map one and then ended up winning 6-3 on high rise and dominated them on the invasion control 3-0. Uh, and then Optic obviously comes out and blows them out in map four and five, 250 to 100, and then a 6-2 on the final invasion. Like Optic obviously kind of destroys them in the final two maps, but like Subliners probably should have 3 0. They choked the Vista and then won two in a row. Um, and it's unfortunate we gas him up all the time because he deserves to be gassed. He's an incredible player, but this was a rough event for Kismet. One of the probably the most rough event that I can think of off the top of my head for Kismet since, you know, he won major one last year, which was kind of like, I feel like Major won last year winning that was kind of his like official coming out party. Like he I know he had some decent events early in MW19. Then when he got back in the league in Vanguard, he was good. But like they never won an event. I feel like the real like Kismet, like he's here, he's like a top sub in the game was when he won major one in Vanguard or in MW2. Yeah, agreed. Like that was like where he like really shined. But I mean, like, I mean, on the event, Brock, Kismet at a 0.83. That was lower than guys like Pentagram. Uh it was just 0.01 above accuracy. I mean, the only guys Kismet had a better KD uh, on the weekend then was Accuracy, Kremp, Vickle, Diamond Con, and Fame. And like some of those players like Diamond Con, Fame, Accuracy, uh, they only had one match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there could be skewed from one bad match, whereas Kismet had plenty of matches to input those stats. Yep. On the bright side, is if Kismet does play better... Um... In the series, they probably will win this, even though they should have won. <laughs> 100%. And I trust Kismet as a player to bounce back. Oh, 100%, yeah. Especially for champs, definitely. The scary thing to me, Brock, for this team, I mean, uh, I'd like to know if you think any different, but the scary thing to me for this team is the hard point. The hard point has just not been there, especially against the other top four teams. Mm-hmm. Like, the hard point for them just hasn't been there. I mean, they take out LAT. Um, but they do lose a hard point to LAT. They win one, but they do lose one. Um, against Atlanta in winners round two, uh, they drop the one hard point, obviously, as they lose 3 0. Uh, and then against Seattle Surge, they drop the map one hard point. Uh, but once again, win, a, win the control, win the search, win the map four. Uh, and against Optic, they win the search and the control and then lose both hard points. Like they, they're dropping a lot of hard points for a team that should be pretty good in hard point. And it's not like they're only losing uh, the hard points to the top four teams. Like they lost one to Seattle. They lost one to LAT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just very interesting that New York is struggling so much in hard point to close out games. And like we said, probably is in large part due to Kismet struggling so much um, overall on the weekend. But I, I trust him to bounce back. Like this New York team, they're definitely the fourth best team. Like they're, they definitely cannot even come close to the other three right now, but they're still like, they're right there. Like they can figure a couple things out, figure it out with Kismet. Like they're right there to be able to be a top team again, like to be yeah. in a top three plus. Yeah. For how much they're struggling, struggling like throughout the year, they're, they're still doing pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like they're, they're still in our top four. And that, I mean, you could just say that's a talent diff because the talent level on their team is just so much higher than the, you know, the five through 12 teams, which is absolutely true. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are like, FaZe is so incredible. Had a couple uh, series where they lost game fives. Toronto's back. Uh, they have some consistency issues. Optic, they're like, Optic won the event. They're the best right now. They're they're right up there with FaZe. And I feel like everybody's forgetting about New York, which rightfully so. They definitely deserve to be the fourth team right now. But I don't know. Like, when you look at, like, Toronto seems to be struggling big time because, like, Envoy and Insight. We'll kind of just, like, combine you know toronto in here right now we'll talk about them a little bit and because at this point we're talking about the top four so we're going to kind of get rid of our whole format of going to the fourth to the third to the second team now we're just going to talk about the the three teams that didn't win the tournament and we'll touch on optic last yeah um but like for the side of new york to me like 
obviously like some people were saying like is a change needed no you're not changing this team at this point like you're rolling this team for the rest of the year and i don't think they need to make a change but their hard point is really the only thing lacking they still look overall pretty good in search or destroy they look pretty good in control their hard point's the thing that's lacking and it's really just mostly lacking because kismet struggled so badly this weekend and like when I look at them compared to Toronto, to me, Toronto, the issue with them is Envoy and Insight are still so inconsistent. Envoy was better this weekend than he was at the last tournament, but still super inconsistent. And like, if I have to talk about getting Envoy and Insight both consistent or just Kismet, I mean, it's probably easier to just find Kismet some mm-hmm. consistency. And also Kismet, like, he's a player that seems pretty motivated. Like, he he's always locked in. Like, I don't know. I To me, all New York has to do, figure out Kismet get him back in rhythm and, and this team can upset anyone like they're they're world champions yeah but what i don't want new york to do is just focus so much on the hard point struggles that they have and this you know search is just good plummets yeah because they're very good at search still yeah um on the side of toronto brox as we kind of mentioned them already like you got to find a way to make envoy and insight more consistent i mean insight had a point eight nine on the weekend which for his standards um, not the greatest, and just overall just didn't look as good as we're used to. Um, where's Envoy here on the weekend? I can't find him. I'm blind. There he is, 0.91. But once again, it was better than Major 2, but like he had a lot of maps where it was just like just putting up absolute stinkers, and it was like, man, I, we're just not used to that Envoy. Like even his bad maps for the most part, like he usually doesn't have any crazy, terrible maps, but it, it just wasn't the best weekend for him. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. And I thought it might be a little different because against Seattle in the first series, he came out with a 1.28 and he was shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. What are your thoughts of Toronto? Like, what do we, what do we need to see out of Toronto? Is it just the consistency factor of those two players that we mentioned? I mean, then Envoy against Optic in the win drops a 0.88 and, you know, he didn't look terrible, but didn't have the same firepower. Uh, And then against Atlanta phase, um, in winner's final, he had a 0. 0.75. Their whole team really overall in the kills department kind of struggled. Scrap hard carried uh, yeah. in that series. And then in the grand final against Optic, obviously they all kind of got slammed. But Envoy was, you know, really struggling. 0. 0.8, uh, 14,000 damage. Just not the best series overall or the best weekend from Envoy. I, I think for them, it's just the consistency, like I said. Yeah, consistency. And I, I just, I mean, Envoy, I feel like, Insight is the one you want to have be more consistent than Envoy. When Insight's on, then it seems like their team flows a lot better than compared to like if Envoy does struggle here and there. Yeah, I agree. And like to be honest with you, actually, one other thing I want to mention it is the consistency of those two. But Kleenex had a point nine one along with Envoy, and I just didn't feel like we saw as many like Kleenex. Like I don't. It, Anybody that watches really knows what I say, like what I mean when I say this. Like, I don't feel like we saw like the Kleenex maps. Like, Kleenex has maps sometimes where it's just like he is unkillable. He's going to run at you. He's going to go 35 and 20, take over in a hard point, going to be so aggressive that you're just going to be, he's going to be running you down and you're going to struggle because he's just making plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, to me, we just didn't see that out of Kleenex this weekend as much or as much lately as we need to. And like, that could make this team go to the next level. Like, I once again think Toronto could easily come out, win major four, win champs, like do whatever, and they could be incredible, but they're still a level below our top two, which is where we'll get to phase Brock. I know they didn't finish top two in this event, they did finish third, but Oh, there's a lot to unpack here with phase Brock. Yeah. And there they lost is eight of their last nine search and destroys. Simp, Abizi, Selly, and Madraza lost eight of their last nine search and destroys. That is just that's not what you're going to want to hear. <laughs> it's it's mind-blowing, right? With that caliber of players and how literally all of them, you know, came out from Search and Destroy, it seems like. Well, and, like, historically, like, a BZ, we know him in Search, First Blood Machine, like, absolute weapon in Search and Destroy, Simp, coming out of the S&D scene, like you mentioned, like, one of the greatest S&D players of all time, Draza, also always grinding S&D, an incredible S&D player, and Selium. The king of playing his life, he's clutch, his shot super straight. Like he's always been a pretty good S and D player as well. And like overall as a team, they've always been pretty good. They got a good coaching staff. They got Tupac on the staff. Like they got it all. Team, yeah, this team is very good at like, and it's not like it's a, a usual thing for them to struggle and search, but it's concerning, uh, nonetheless. And also, this is like weird, Brock. And I don't usually like to talk about the drama stuff too much, but this in game stuff. I, 
this is so crazy to say because this team is so good and should never break up based on in-game stuff. But like, I don't know if this team, like, unless this team wins champs with all the beef going on outside of game, I don't know if they're going to stick together. Yeah. Like, have you seen like the, I saw it like, because somehow it popped up on my feed, just like in like the for you thing on Twitter. But like some of the stuff, like obviously like we probably won't touch on it, but like the stuff being said back and forth about each other's girlfriends again was crazy. Yeah, like, that like was, that said, was... probably stuff to keep off the timeline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But like, I, I, I'm I saw this and it was like, did you see the thing about like, like Simp's wife was like liking tweets about like, uh, I don't even know if they're still liked anymore or something. But like, I saw like a screenshot somebody was saying of like Simp's wife was like liking tweets of, uh, I think she maybe unliked her now, but like. I don't know, maybe she didn't. Yeah, she like liked the tweet about like Scrappy's girlfriend saying like Draza confronted her and then like liking tweets of Scrappy saying like people are crashing out because they can't kill me in a in a, uh, in a video game and like she was hanging out with Scrappy's girlfriend all weekend seeming to like like tweets like bashing Draza and his girlfriend like I don't know, like That's for any just... of us that know like real life stuff when your family, significant others like don't like people you're around it's not the easiest situation to be in especially when you have to spend this much time and be teammates with them yeah Mm -hmm. it could be a definitely a you know think about more fall out potentially if they don't win champs yeah like if they're not winning and like there's this much beef between like players family members on the team Mm -hmm. uh and players family members on the team don't like each other like it could cause stress in the team and like you know maybe we're reading too much into it could not be true like the team is disgusting in game but i don't know it's just it's not a like regardless of if they break up or not it's not an ideal situation for anybody to like if you have teammates your your teammates family members or significant others hate each other yeah (laughs) Uh, it's not exactly the most ideal thing and it's bringing a lot of drama to them in game that like maybe they are like bring a lot of drama to them that they just don't necessarily want. It's not an ideal situation to say the least. Like you'd, you'd like if your significant others with your people that you're spending all your time with, you'd like if they enjoyed each other's company. Yeah. That's just kind of in the back of your mind. <laughs> well, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we knew the beef coming in and we thought it wouldn't be a big deal, but maybe it actually is going to end up being a big deal. I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll see how this unfolds and you know, see how they do going forward. I mean, I would think you're going to agree with me here, but in game, I have literally zero worries about them. They lost yeah. game five to a very good Toronto team and a very good optic team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, in game, I eight of the last nine searches. Is it a little concerning? Yes, absolutely. You can't completely write it off, but like this team has simple BC, Celia, Madraza. I trust them to figure out search and destroy. Um, and they are still an absolutely incredible team. Um, and you know what, Brock? We've mentioned this, and people were all saying, dude, I think Optic could win. People were saying the tournament was going to be boring because no phase. And I, I was acknowledging, like, yeah, absolutely, phase is the favorite. But like we mentioned, Brock, and we said this, whenever a Call of Duty tournament seems so obvious, it usually doesn't go the way you think it does. Yep. And that's what happened this weekend because everybody thought phase was going to win. And we were like, you know what? It usually doesn't go that way. I ended up picking Optic to win, and thankfully I was right. Um, you were right. was able to get a tournament winner right. So on the podcast now, Brock, we can just move the goalposts. That's that. On the podcast now, we've had a perfect, or not perfect bracket, but predict the correct winner right each major. You got the first two, and I got the uh, the third one. Yep. And now next one is New York because that's the last team to uh, you know yeah, win. Out funny. <laughs> um, but that yeah, that's pretty much it. We got for phase. Now we got to gas up the tournament winners, Brock. That is optic. X. Uh, been a very long time since we could say Optic won a tournament. Uh, since what 805 days they said to that point. So many um, days. Yeah, so many days. The last one was the major one Vanguard win with Scump. Scump's last win as a competitor. Uh, just an awesome tournament from the boys on Optic. Um, everybody knows I have one player and one player only. I want to shout out, and that's Kenny. Shout uh, out just kidding obviously shout out to all the players shots he was he was Insane. great on the weekend but he was unbelievable on sunday mm-hmm. and dashy with all the clutches that he was doing this weekend oh i want to talk about that play in a second we'll get to dash in a second let's start with Shotzi though i mean Shotzi in that series against phase in the losers final broke the kill record with 118 he had a 1.23 and 
a 1.23 doesn't even do justice what he was doing. He was 39 and 26 on that first six star, just playing his life in the pool hill. He went nine and four in the map two win. Even in the the control they lost, he was 30 and 27. Even in the hard point they lost, he was 34 and 22 or 34 and 32. And mm-hmm. then map five, he goes six and seven. But I mean, we know that Dash was the MVP of that map five. Um, but overall, like oh my god, Shotzi was just incredible. And that's that's only including the losers final. In the grand final, the 4-0, Shotzi was absolutely incredible. Uh, with a 1.37. Um, and I specifically remember, Brock, we were fighting off a lot of comments on Twitter, on videos in the beginning of the year saying Shotzi wasn't going to be that good at this game because uh, mm-hmm. he didn't like it. And we were like, I don't know. Could that be true? Sure. But he's still Shotzi at the end of the day. And like this team still has Shotzi, Pred, Dashy, and Kenny. And like a lot of people thought we were like crazy for thinking they could win an event. Yeah, it seemed like that that way. <laughs> but like I was like, do I think for sure they're gonna win an event? No, I don't think it's a guarantee, but like this team has four incredible MVP caliber players on it. So they could certainly win some events. And here they are. Uh they win and on Sunday they simply outclassed both teams. FaZe could have definitely beat them. I mean, that map five came down to the wire, but it's FaZe. They're an incredible team. Uh Toronto mm-hmm. was also incredible, but uh, Toronto was completely outclassed that final. I mean, it was just a master class from the side of Optic in the in the grand final. Yeah, it really was. And it, but what, was a stat shot he had like six 30 bombs in a row on response yeah, maps? stupid like that. Um, yeah, it was, it was insane. <laughs> Brock, shout out to my GOAT. Led the final series in damage. That was Kenny. Uh, we'll touch on Pred and Dashi after Kenny, but Kenny was also awesome. He had a rough series uh, against Toronto in winner's round two. And people were, of course, you know, like they always do, overreacting, calling for his head. But when you listen to listen-ins, it just kind of is a litmus test on your your knowledge of COD. Kenny does so much for that team in comms, like directing so much traffic, like his communication is so on point. And like, it can't be understated how much harder it is to, you know, shoot your gun, play the game and like put up big numbers when you're doing that much heavy lifting in the comms. He still dropped a 0.97 on the weekend. It was overall very good. He was also incredible on Sunday. Uh that series against FaZe and Losers Final, he had a point eight eight, but he was dealing out the damage as well. Um, and then obviously in the grand final was incredible. Um, yep. And what did I see? I liked it because I wanted to mention it today. You can go ahead, give your thoughts on Kenny while I find this tweet. Man, Kenny, a lot of these, a lot of the people did not like the move in the off season, but you know, <laughs> us too. We 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 stand by Kenny all the Man, time. Everybody knows Kenny's my favorite. Yeah, you know he, what, what he brings, like you said, the IGL, the comms, just the good vibes. Just, holding players accountable and just like the mo- the overall structure just you can see this team and it's he bring i think he brings like a certain amount of like iciness clutchness that his team just didn't have before i couldn't agree more with this, this like all the things you said like i agree with completely but i think the two things that you said that i think are the most crucial the ice the clutch factor and the accountability i feel like he brings like an accountability that you just haven't had in optic in quite probably since like crim yeah because, like, Scump obviously holds people accountable. Like, we're not saying these players are, like, not responsible enough, but, like, everybody knows Scump's a little bit more of, like, a trolly, like, fun personality. And Kenny seems like a trolly. I mean, he's always laughing on stage, but I feel like Kenny is, like, will call you out more, where I feel like Scump maybe isn't as confrontational, more of, like, likes to be friends with his teammates. And, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, not saying it's a, a bad style, but, like, I feel like the confrontational style of Kenny's leadership, where, like, he will call you out if something's wrong until you get it right. I feel like that is something that maybe these players needed because obviously we know, I mean, Shotzi, Pred, Dashy, like these players have incredible talent. Uh, there's no reason they shouldn't be winning a minimum of a tournament a year. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But yeah, this is the tweet I like from Brian Stash. Shout out to him. Uh, if you don't follow him on Twitter, I would highly recommend it because um, he always posts some great CDL stats. But Kenny Brock is now a nine-time champion. Uh, and this is the fifth title he's won in uh, World War II, Black Ops 4, Vanguard, MW2, and now MW3. He also has been to 15 finals, so he's 9-6 and six, uh, in finals matches in his career, which is a pretty solid record. Uh, and obviously has the one ring dating back to Vanguard. So Kenny, nine-time champion now, one away from joining a pretty elusive club uh, of double-digit tournament wins. Uh, and it was well across... Five COD titles is, is pretty outrageous. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of wins um, across mm-hmm. the titles. I mean, nine yeah, yeah. maybe doesn't sound crazy because people hear about like the Krim having 30 plus, but like Kenny didn't play 
uh, in the jetpack era where there were so many tournaments like AW where they won a lot of those tournaments and nine time champion is insane. I mean, to win a tournament is an incredible feat. Nine to nine's a lot of wins. I mean, that's a lot of wins. Yeah. And, and Kenny is just a, you know, so versatile, like, like just the ultimate flex. Is it like at Vanguard, he ran a sub and he won the grand final MVP. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he is an incredible flex. I mean, He's awesome on the submachine gun if he has to be, but like he said at this point in his career and like just how he feels, he's most comfortable on the flex and with as good of a sub duo as he has on this team, the flex finally makes sense for him. And um, everybody knows like pretty much wherever Kenny goes, that's like the team I'm a fan of. It feels weird because like it is optic and like people never want to hear optic bias on podcasts, but I'm always going to be cheering for Kenny. We're heading to champs. I'm probably going to be in some optic gear cheering for Kenny. Uh, And then when he's out, who knows who I'll cheer for, but I'm going to be supporting Kenny. Um, he's yep. my favorite player, so I obviously am biased towards me when he's bad. I just will act like I didn't see it. Um, yep. <laughs> player I'm biased towards, but no, joking. And if, he, if he's bad, we call it out, just like any player. But um, Kenny was just awesome this weekend. And then Pred also, Brock, on the weekend, like, he finally, like, that series against Heretics especially, Pred at a 1.1. I feel like we finally saw Pred, and, and Karma touched on it actually in his interview, we finally saw Pred get to that, like, like, I don't give a shit. Like I'm just going to hit, hit cuts out and just get kills. We finally saw Pred get back to that. And like, that's when Pred's at his best. When he's just going out and frying. Mm-hmm. Yep. So incredible weekend for Pred, but Brock Dashy, probably with the play of the tournament for optic, yep. uh, the one V three clutch, which we'll talk about <laughs> selling him's play in a second. Interesting one, but the one V three clutch from Dashy, it was three, three, uh, an absolutely pivotal round in the map five and dashy clutches a one V three to put optic up four, three. And to me, that round was probably the round that won optic, the tournament. If they, you know, you never know if they lose that they're down four, three, they still have a chance to win. But the fact that you go up four, three in a fashion like that, where it just is backbreaking for the other team, mm-hmm. um, just incredible, incredible plays out of dashy to clutch that one V three and give them a four, three lead in map five. Yeah, that, that was a insane clutch and insane reaction time on Shellyan, who decided to jump over for, you know, no no reason that he really needed to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I want to talk about. I saw a lot of people roasting Draza. To me, Draza didn't make a bad play. No, he didn't. I he had think it was Shellyan. I mean, he chowed him with, like, eight seconds or whatever. He, like, jumped out with seven or eight seconds on the clock. Like... Selium is in the right position. Like, absolutely. Like, challenge is the right play, but you need to do it at five so he can't plant. Yeah. Like, or I think truly, if Selium chows at five, FaZe is in the final. I really think if FaZe wins that round, they probably win the, that map, but then they just got rolled two more rounds in a row after that, got beat 6 3. Yeah. Even if Selium, like, shoulder peaks, I mean, that's going to throw the eyes off just a little bit. And he has very minimal time to literally the only play you can't make if you're selling him there is to let him kill you before five seconds and there was like yeah. what eight on the clock when he child seven and a half something like that yeah and also yeah you're not wrong though the reaction time of the snap from dashy on that play was insane that just yeah that's just you know that's what he does basically that's how we know him to be <laughs> i saw it was like a 0.15 second reaction they said it was like basically inhuman <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. He is like the straight shot ever, too. <laughs> Dude, but th- literally, like, that they gave Dashy an un like Dashy shout out to him for clutching it, but it was literally an unwinnable that phase just threw. Like, because Draza's dark. Like, when Dashy goes to snap on a Selium, Draza could just back up. You know, he can live for sure. Like, there's no way that Dashy can kill him if he doesn't peek. Uh, so Selium just sits close there because Dashy was locked up. Like, he wasn't going to kill Dra- uh, Selium unless he child. Yeah. So tell him just wait till five seconds because you know, like he was just shooting at Draza at eight. So you know that he's not going to, like, he's not going to be able to like be planting right away, and he can't get the plant up before five. He was shooting at eight. That's a three second difference. Takes five seconds to plant. Mm-hmm. He can't have the plant done by five and like like scurry away from you. So you just wait till five. You jump around the corner. If he's planting, you kill him. You win the round. If he's not planting, he kills you. But he doesn't have time to plant. Draza just stays alive. Free win. Yep. I guess Selium was just like, hey, he's distracted. I'll just kill him. But then like. Not only did Dashy snap, but Selium whiffed like a full burst of his pistol, and that's what allowed Dashy to win it. Yeah, just those little moments can change, you know, the whole series, the whole tournament. Yeah, and just 
like I said, that people were kind of bashing Draza. I saw a lot of. I, I don't agree. I, I don't think Draza made a bad play at all. Like after he kills Celium, maybe Celium could watch the kill cam and see that he insta stuck it, but like he has to wait for that delay to watch the kill cam and like see it or something. Um, I I can't blame Draza for just backing off. Like it is Dashy. Dashy does like to chow. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he's just pre aiming you because he knows where you are, like waiting for you to chow. So I don't mind the play from Draza at all. Like could he have went and checked and chowed him? Sure, but also like if he would have ran out and just sprint them to Chalam and Dashi would have been pre-aiming, then people would be roasting in the same way for not hiding, you know? Yeah, just the, the 50-50 and guess right, guess wrong. Yeah, he took the 50-50 and he, even didn't, he didn't even play it bad. Like, he made him weak and pushed him. Like, Draza did everything right, he just lost the gunfight. That's going to happen. Yep. Because, uh, I mean, once again, if he plays the 50-50 the other way and it doesn't work, then everybody say he played it wrong and he should have played it the way that he did play it. Like, it's just revisionist history for COD fans. Yep, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just whatever. I, rough, rough spot for Draza to be in there. Then the whole crowd's chanted F you Draza at him. But um shout out to Optic for the win on the weekend. First time they've won in a long time. And um shout out to my boy Kenny. I've been gassing him up because people have just been talking down on him too much. Um and Shotzi, I mean, superstar Brock. Indeed, yeah, he was an absolute superstar on Sunday. It was insane how good he was. Mm-hmm. Great to see Optic back winning tournaments. Uh, I'm excited to see if they can keep it up going forward, though, because you know historically when Optic wins, uh, some complacency sometimes sets in. But they have Kenny on the team, so maybe uh, he will keep them away from that. But also, like people that are just thinking this instantly makes Optic like the number one team in the game. Like, sure, for right now, maybe you could say they're the best in the game. They just won, but like. Hey man, FaZe is still right there. FaZe is Toronto still to me is clear number three, even though they beat FaZe. Yeah. Uh, Toronto's still a clear number three to me. And I think New York is a very clear number four. Like Toronto is very clearly ahead of New York in three. Um, and I still think now, like, I still think if you want to call FaZe the best team in the game, I'm not gonna like completely argue with you. If you want to call Optic, I'm not gonna completely argue with you. It's hard to argue against the when a top team wins a tournament, it's hard not to say they're the top team. So like if you're saying optic, sure. Not going to argue, but I still think, like, I mean, FaZe lost a map five um, to the boys uh, of Toronto in a very close series. Uh, and then they lost a map five to Optic, where, like, literally, if Dashie doesn't clutch a 1v3, like I said, FaZe probably goes up. You know, they go 4 3 and they probably win the map. Uh, and then FaZe lost a round 11 game five to Toronto. Yeah. Like, they lost crazy scenarios where they were just losing all their search and destroys in the weekend um i don't know if you want to call phase still the top team in the game i'm not really gonna argue with you but it, you could also say optic it, it's a little bit more muddy at the top now though since optic won in, in phase came out in third mm-hmm. yeah i also think it was a blessing for optic to get toronto in the final over phase because phase the veto advantage and how strong they are on their map pool can be like an absolute nightmare to match up in finals and in this case like Optic didn't have to worry about phase in the final and like playing that disgusting map pool. Uh, Cause then Toronto, for some reason gave optic sub base, their best map map one, even though Toronto is also very good on it. Their only loss was to optic. Um, they, for some reason gave optic that, and they gave optic Rio, which they looked incredible on earlier uh, in the weekend. So interesting decisions from Toronto there in terms of the maps they gave them, but Hey, mm-hmm. Toronto was also very good at sub base. So you got to respect the ego chow. Yep. Agreed. I mean, Shuprock, we were going to do a tier list potentially in this episode of the teams, but we already have run pretty long, so I don't know if I want to include that. We might just do it next week and long, since there probably won't be much news. We might just do like the the team or and or player tier list next week, uh, as well as the predictions then, because we're mm-hmm. pretty long and like, I don't know, maybe if there are some roster changes, we can just tier rank based on where we think they'll go uh, in the next one, but um, it's probably just like a simple phase in Optic in S, Toronto, and then maybe New York with them in A, I guess. And then you kind of just fill the rest out exactly where you think. Yep. And then the rest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe a couple teams would be, maybe you give like LAT and Seattle B. Maybe give like Miami, and I could be missing somebody, maybe give like Miami and Carolina. Um, and yeah, probably just Miami and Carolina C tier, and then give like the bottom four D tier. <laughs> yeah, and give B- Boston F because they can't win a search, which is so weird because they're they're shooters; they just can't win a search. 
Yeah, it is. Got no ice. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, but I got nothing else. Be ready to wrap it up, Brock. It was a, it was a very fun tournament weekend. That that Sunday was one of the best Sundays I can remember in quite some time. Yeah, well, down to the wire. Ex- well, every match besides the final. What more can you ask for, really? Well, yeah, that was look. awesome. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say be excited for the next one though too. Next next turn, even though there's no fans, I'm excited for it. Yeah, makes me excited for champs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very, very, very excited for champs. I mean, you could have like the worst year of tournaments ever, but champs will always be fun to go to. Yep. So, you know, excited for champs. Other than that, you know, not much else going on. Let me put some rank play here and see how that goes. And, you know, about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on the audio platforms, drop a follow, drop a five star review. We appreciate all your support, as we always say. We truly do appreciate it. You guys have been crushing it. Um, I'm very much looking forward to the next stage. This potentially could be. I'm sad to go back to online and no tournament, but this could potentially be the best stage of online qualifiers going forward here. As you know, we have the bottom seven, maybe Boston, if they go super sane teams competing for champs, like all of them are alive in the race. So, like, all those matches are going to be a little more hype factor behind it because all these teams need wins so desperately. So, excited to watch all those. Hope you guys are as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.